This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. JLP Councillor Darren Wood is dead. Jamaica Labour Party Councillor for the Ferry Hill Division in East Portland, Darren Wood has died. Wood died at the University Hospital of the West Indies on Thursday morning after he was brought there on Wednesday as a result of developing breathing difficulties. He is believed to have been in his 60s. Wood's cause of death is unclear, but it is understood that he recently contracted COVID-19. As news of the councillor's death surfaced, a number of Portland residents took to social media to express their grief. Okay, wake up. This is not a joke. I call you like three times since last night. No pick up, no for here, say you're dead. Gone so me G. Just so. They're on wood. One woman posted. Shared another. Death is all over. Shake my head. Rest in peace, they're on wood. Added another. Rest in peace to Councillor Deron Wood of the Ferry Hill Division in Portland Eastern, who died from COVID this morning. Continue to take all care as it relates to COVID-19. It's serious. Out there. This is the second councillor in East Portland to have died since the COVID-19 pandemic began in Jamaica last March. In October of last year, councillor for the Fellowship Division in the constituency, 61-year-old Irvin Brown, died after he was taken to the hospital following a reported COVID-19 diagnosis. Videographer killed in road rage attack. The police are investigating a suspected road rage homicide that occurred in St. Andrew on Tuesday that claimed the life of 49-year-old videographer Courtney Sutherland. Sutherland was reportedly brutally gunned down by another motorist after a car accident involving the two along Washington Boulevard. Radio broadcaster and media personality Rodney Campbell, Sutherland's friend, tweeted, On this day, I am numb beyond all understanding. My friend, my brother, my colleague, God down in what is being called road rage. I can't even process this, especially knowing exactly how he is and has always been. Man dead of a car accident? It could have been any one of us. Sutherland was one of 10 persons killed on Tuesday in a bloody wave of violence that gripped the island, pushing the murder tally to 312, an increase of 8% when compared to the corresponding period last year. Far as I know, he was shot and killed after being in a car accident. Seems the other driver was on a fit of road rage. I don't know exactly what happened, if he hit that one or was hit. Seems the driver was really crazy. The family is devastated, especially since he was the nicest laid-back person, Campbell told the news. Sutherland's brother, Dean, a video editor, posted a photo of himself and his brother on his IG page. Ten homicides recorded in 24 hours. Murder tally moves to 312. Jamaica's murder tally now stands at 312, an increase of 8% when compared to the corresponding period last year. This after a bloody 24 hours, which saw at least 10 homicides being recorded on Tuesday. Scene of crime investigators were kept busy across Kingston Central, Kingston West, St. Catherine South, and St. Andrew South Police Divisions. The bloodshed began at 8.15 a.m. Tuesday when gunmen opened fire on a male passenger on a bus along Spanish Town Road in the vicinity of Dela Cree Park. 30-year-old vendor Dennis Gregory Nixon was shot repeatedly and died on the spot. A woman was also injured in the attack. From there, investigators were called to the scene of a double murder along Berry Street in downtown Kingston at about 9.30 a.m. Roshane Bigger Thomas, 29, and Okitha P. Letzman were shot and killed, while a woman was hospitalized with gunshot injuries. Still in Kingston Central, delivery truck sideman 21-year-old Christopher Song was killed in the vicinity of Chestnut Lane. It is reported that about 2.02 p.m., Song, who was on the passenger side of the delivery truck, was shot after men opened the door to the vehicle and fired, hitting the now deceased and the driver. They were rushed to the hospital where Song was pronounced dead on a Arrival. At 2.30 p.m., security guards attached to Hawkeye were responding to a robbery at the Public Sector Employees Cooperative Credit Union in the community of Caribbean Estate in Portmore, St. Catherine, when they came under attack. Opaland Simit, 43, was shot and killed by the robbers, while another guard was treated for injuries to his leg and abdomen. They were assisted to the hospital by the police and scene of the crime personnel were called to the intersection of Washington Boulevard and Headley Avenue about 3.30 p.m. after loud explosions were heard. 
Upon arrival, 49-year-old Courtney Sutherland was found slumped over the steering wheel of a white Honda Accord, suffering from gunshot wounds. He was pronounced dead at hospital. By about 4 p.m., another murder was also declared in the St. Andrew South Police Division. 51-year-old Higgler, Everton Robinson, was gunned down at his stall along Spanish Town Road about 3.40 p.m. He was reportedly pounced upon by two men who shot him repeatedly before escaping on foot. Still in St. Andrew South, a double murder was committed about 6.30 p.m. in the Palm Grove housing scheme. The deceased have been identified as Richard Big Eye Evans, a plumber, and 28-year-old welder Jerome Rumi Robinson. It is reported that both men were standing in a common area in the housing scheme when they were approached and shot by men traveling in a motor car. The final homicide on record during the 24-hour period under review took place at a week in St. Andrew South. Reports reaching the news are that about 8.15 p.m., 36-year-old construction worker Okino Bensley, who is off an Ashley Road address, was fatally stabbed. The 25-year-old suspect in the attack remains in police custody. 39 Arrested in Major St. Anne Operation 39 people have been arrested following an early morning joint police-military raid at a guest house in Discovery Bay, St. Anne. During the raid, members of the security forces seized several items described as lottery scamming and advanced fee fraud paraphernalia. The 39 comprising 28 men and 11 women were booked as guests at the Up Market Clock Tower guest house. They are now being questioned by the police investigators. According to the police, a popular disc jockey from Steertown in St. Anne is among those arrested. He was being sought in connection with a triple murder, head of the St. Anne Police Division, Superintendent Dwight Powell told the news. Twenty-one of them are from outside this parish, with addresses ranging from St. James, Trelawney, Clarendon, St. Catherine and other sections of the island, Powell said. St. James has seen a sharp increase of 210% in its murder figures for the first two months of 2021 compared with 2020. Just last week, a curfew was imposed in one of the hot spots, Norwood, where several murders have taken place since the start of the year. Double murder sparks fear of reprisal in Southside, Central Kingston. There was a double murder in section of Southside in Central Kingston on Tuesday, triggering fears that there will be deadly reprisals soon in the community. One of the deceased has been identified as a 52-year-old woman, Orthea Letman, and the other a 30-year-old man identified as Bigo. Reports are shortly before 10 a.m. on Tuesday, armed men approached a shop on Barry Street between Foster Lane and High Holborn Street in the community. The men reportedly opened fire, hitting three persons. Bigger reportedly died on the scene, while Letman, who was affectionately called P, was rushed to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. Police reports said a 36-year-old woman was also shot and injured. Residents of the inner community believe the double murder was a reprisal for for a murder several weeks ago. Tensions have been high in the Parade Gardens community in recent months, with reports of ongoing turf war there. Last year, in September, 26-year-old Ras Amigo MacDonald, a laborer of Fleet Street in the community, was killed by armed men who then escaped in a waiting motor vehicle. Hours later, in what is believed to have been a reprisal for MacDonald's killing, gunmen attacked 26-year-old Duane Dunbar, otherwise called Killer, and a 21-year-old woman at the intersection of Barry Street and Maiden Lane, both were killed. Six months later, residents of sections of Southside are still cowering in fear as the feud has seen gangsters targeting their opponents in a deadly game of tit for tat. There have been 17 murders so far, representing an 89% increase in the number of homicides committed in the Kingston Central Police Division when compared with the corresponding period last year. 13 arrested, two charged in St. Thomas anti-gang operation. Two men were arrested and charged during an anti-gang operation by the police in St. Thomas. Charged are 19-year-old Leroy Farkerson, otherwise called Slooney, and Joan James, 28, both of 11 miles, Bull Bay in the parish. They are charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. The police say during the operation, they recovered a Browning Barita 9mm pistol along with five 9mm rounds of ammunition. 
The police report that on Monday, a joint team consisting of members of the JCF Specialized Operations and the Jamaica Defense Force conducted a mission-driven operation in the Lane Gate community of 11 miles Bull Bay. Operating on credible intelligence, the security forces went into the community aiming to disrupt the activities of members of both the Lane Gate faction as well as the Tankwell gang. According to the police, it is understood that the two rival gangs have been engaged in violence confrontations recently and were planning to commit several violent crimes in the coming days. During the early morning operation, the security forces searched several premises and interviewed more than 20 individuals. At the end of the operation, 13 persons were taken into custody. Five men were held on reasonable suspicion of committing a crime, including two persons for illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition. Meanwhile, the police are appealing to Zani Peterkin, otherwise called Zaza, and Nesta Morrison, alias Bigo or Grimmy Boss, to visit the Specialized Operations Branch as it is believed that they can be of assistance in the investigation of several major crimes in the St. Thomas Division. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.